Commission meeting. Please turn off or silence all cell phones during the meeting. Meetings are televised every day on Channel 2 at 6 p.m. and midnight and available for viewing on YouTube. Call to order, Pledge of Allegiance, followed by silent meditation. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, first up, looks like I have a proclamation and some awards. Okay, first up is the proclamation, and it's for Small Business Saturday, so, but Wendy Scheidt's not here, evidently, so, okay, but... Okay, so um, whereas advocate, advocacy groups, public and private organizations across the country have endorsed the Small Business Saturday as a shop local campaign held on the Saturday following Thanksgiving to encourage reinvestment in small business across the country. And whereas small businesses employ over 55% of America's workers either owning or working for a small business. And whereas 87% of consumers in the United States agree that small businesses are critical to the overall economic health of the United States. And whereas according to research firm Civic Economics, for every $100 spent at a local store, 68 stays within the community, while online shopping generates little or no benefit for the local economy. And whereas American Express is a leader in promoting Small Business Saturday throughout the country, as well as the National Main Street Center and Kansas Main Street, and whereas annually Leavenworth Main Street hosts Shop Small Saturday on Small Business Saturday within the downtown, with many businesses consistently participating. On average, 95000 is spent in the businesses and overall merchants collectively, average 200000 in sales. And whereas the city of Leavenworth wishes to recognize the contributions that small businesses make to our community and local economy. Now, therefore, I, Camel M. Leonhard, Mayor of the city of Leavenworth, Kansas, hereby proclaim November 26, 2022 as Small Business Saturday in the city of Leavenworth, and hereby urge all citizens to shop at and support our local businesses. Okay, so I guess no one's here to take it, so... <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Yay to small businesses. Okay. Okay, next up is Employee Service Awards. In 1926, the League of Kansas Municipalities began the practice of recognizing city employees for faithful, continuous service. Loyal and dedicated officials and employees form the foundation of every city with strong, progressive government. The pride and devotion shown by these men and women in their jobs is an important factor in making Kansas communities a better place to live. The following City of Leavenworth employees are being honored at this time. Ten years of service. Melissa Bauer, Public Information Officer. Justin Lacey, Fire Driver slash Operator. G. Tabor Medill III, Recreational Supervisor. Clarice Phillips, records clerk. Noah Wooten, police sergeant, one. 15 years of service. Andrea Cheatham, housing manager. Tammy Herkin, telecommunications specialist. Roberta Johnston, senior court clerk. John Lemke, WPC assistant superintendent. Brandon Mance, police sergeant. 20 years of service. Roberta Eddy, Telecommunications Specialist. Steve Grant, Parks and Recreation Director. 25 years of service. <laughs> Carol Charity, Manager of Information Systems. Tyler Ewart, Fire Captain. Sean Goki, Police Lieutenant. Danny Hall, Police Lieutenant. Johnny Sweet II, Police Officer 2. Patrick Tooley, 
Section 8 Coordinator. Let's give him a round of applause. Next up is old business, consideration of previous meeting minutes. Minutes from October 25th, 2022, regular meeting, and November 1st, 2022, special meeting. Any questions or concerned from fellow commissioners? No. No. Okay. Um, I just need a motion. I move that we accept the minutes of the uh, meeting, both on November, the special meeting on November 1st, and the regular meeting on October 25th, 2022. Second. Second. Okay. Begin voting with Commissioner Bowder. Aye. 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 And this is Jermaine. Uh -huh. Aye. Aye. Okay. <laughs> uh, he is on there. Thank you. Good. Okay. Next up. Uh, second consideration ordinance. Second consideration ordinance number 8199, approval of special use permit for residential homestay 771 <coughs> Ottawa. Madam Mayor and Commission, there have been no changes since first consideration. Any questions? Yeah, no. question. Okay. Um, who, who requested this special use uh, permit? The owner it, of the property. Was it a uh, an individual or a corporation? I don't have that information right now. It's the owner of the property. We don't okay. um, have that differentiation. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, anybody else have anything? Anybody? Okay. I just need a roll call. Uh, Commissioner Bowder? Aye. Mayor Le Leon Hart? Aye. Aye. Commissioner, Higley. Commissioner Martin? Aye. And Aye. Commissioner Wilson? Okay. Aye. Aye. Okay. Second consideration ordinance number 8200, approval of franchise agreement with Unite Private Networks LLC. Madam Mayor and Commission, again, there have been no changes since the first time that you heard this item. If there have any questions, we do have staff here uh, will attempt to answer those. Questions. Okay, go ahead, um, Mr. Hangler. Can you tell me, will this, will Unite uh, the, the company? Unite Private Networks, will they be able to place, um, what's called, utility poles on the right of way, or it's, is it only going to be underground that they're allowed to do? It'll actually be both. They have permission to be within the right of way. Uh, some of it will be underground, some of it will have to co locate with like every component. Okay. Does that include in residential areas that already have underground utilities only, except for the lights? I mean, it, they haven't submitted um, oh, well. plans for that yet, but they would be allowed to install underground. Um, we don't have a requirement in the city. I'm aware of that in residential areas, all utilities must be underground. No, no. So. Okay. So Thank you. I'm going to check one thing real quick, sir. That we do have, we did have some language. Oh, no, that was, sorry, that was average. Okay. Okay. So best correct. Okay. Do you have anything? That's no, I don't. Or? That's the only question I have. Uh, okay. Okay, then I just need a roll call vote. Uh, Commissioner Browder? Aye. Mayor Leonhard? Aye. Commissioner Hingula? Aye. Commissioner Martin? Aye. Commissioner Wilson? Aye. Okay. Next up, new business, public comment i.e. items not listed on the agenda or receipt of petitions. Public comment is limited to two to three minutes and no action will be taken by the Commission on public comment items. Please state your name and address. A sign-up sheet will be provided in the Commission chambers for anyone wishing to speak. I know we have a couple, so... Uh, Mr. Chad Higdon. Okay. 
um, yeah, if you just come on up to the podium. Just uh, yeah, state your name and address, please. All right. Um, I'm Chad Higdon. I'm the CEO of Second Harvest Community Food Bank in St. Joseph, Missouri. Our address is uh, 915 Douglas Street, um, St. Joseph, Missouri, 64505. So we are the Feeding America Food Bank that serves Leavenworth County. Um, there's three food banks that serve all of Kansas. We have the four more, most northeast Kansas counties, um, and then Harvesters has about 18 counties and the rest of the state's covered by the Kansas Food Bank out of um, Wichita. And so um, really we, we distribute USDA commodities. If there was a disaster that would come through, we would be tasked with food distribution efforts and supporting um, local agencies. Right now we're working with the Salvation Army, Catholic Charities, and Leavenworth Mission as our three agencies in the county. We actually had um, seven partner agencies prior to the pandemic, and a lot of those have closed and haven't since opened up. And, um, you know, we really are seeing a, a need that's being probably more unmet down here than anywhere else that we work. And we look at um, there's a thing called Map the Mill Gap that Feeding America puts out. And we, uh, we look at our service distribution kind of equitably to the need. Um, and really Leavenworth is one that, that continues t for us to kind of see more need than we're able to get in. And so we're looking at ways. And one of the ways that we do that is through a uh, mobile pantry operation that we work at. We um, have one at Doherty Park and also work with Leavenworth Mission and trying to do what we can. But um, through that, we're seeing more need for on-site cold storage capacity at, at our facility in St. Joe. Um, even through, there's a program we're working now on the state of Kansas called the Local Food Purchasing Agreement that we've um, contracted with the Department of Ag. And so they're, they're even talking more fresh milk, vegetables, um, berries, those kind of things. Um, and even like when we saw trade mitigation um, and the issues with China not <coughs> accepting fresh milk, then we would get... Um, you know offers from the state of Kansas to support fresh milk distribution but so in, in general what we're doing we're looking at about a three and a half million dollar project um, that we're applying for state ARPA funds in Missouri and then they allow us to use um, coronavirus local fiscal recovery funds as part of our match and so we've been we've been going out we've met with all 19 counties that we serve in Missouri and Kansas and we've see, received about hundred and sixty thousand dollars in pledges so far um, to support our match that we estimate to be at about $1.75 million. Um, and so really that's what we're looking at. I didn't know if there might be an opportunity to really present more information or, you know, we've done a lot of work leading up to this. Um, and even some expenses that we've already incurred um, through architectural and engineering work to get us to where we were. Um, we can count expenses incurred since March 3rd of 2021. So we've really got about a quarter of a million dollars I'm already committed to the project that, that's going to go towards the match. So our state mm -hmm. application is due um, November 30th, and then they expect awards to come out in January. And then once awarded, we, we really have a really great opportunity. Um, the scoring system's out there. We kind of know how the process is going to work, and we'll, we'll figure that we're um, going to score very high. It's specifically written in there that expansion of food bank facilities is one of the el eligible activities um, through the project. So we're, we're very encouraged by that and just didn't know um, if there might be some opportunity to kind of continue this discussion. Okay. No, thank you for the information. Uh, so, uh, like I said, we'll, you know, take that in consideration and uh, probably have another discussion okay. another time. Okay. All right. Thanks for I've got some here. I got some info. I will just maybe scan that. I think I've got everybody's email address on the... And I could just kind of, that way I can better explain what it is. Sure, that would be great. That would be great. Okay. That would be great. All right. Thank you. I appreciate the time. Thank oh, you. Oh, yeah. Thank, Thank you. you, Chad. Yeah. Happy Thanksgiving. You too. Thank you. And who do we have next? Uh, Michael Lay. Okay. Mr. Michael Lay. Good evening. My name is Michael Lay. I live in 907 Columbia, Leavenworth, Kansas. And uh, I'm going to hit on three different bullets real quick. Uh, the first one is, what are our streets looking like? We, we, between Broadway and uh, Columbia, right around the corner where I walk every day, one Saturday morning there was a brush pile that was left in the street and it's still laying on the curb. That's one. Two, if you go down to Broadway and Cherokee, there's a trash bag been laying there for three weeks. 
what I, and, and we're talking about the, the refuge problem and everything else, but the whole thing is, if we don't get control of what we're doing now, we're going to have a bigger problem with illegal dumping and stuff like that. Second one is, we're the first city of Kansas. First city of Kansas, but yet we're ninth on the list for the most dangerous town. What are we going to do to clean that up? And the third one is, the project that they had was uh, the 2019 project for, you know, to, to grow the city. I haven't seen any growth yet. I mean, what are, what are, what are the plans? The city, I mean, the citizens, the taxpayers of the city should have options on, you know, at least more notification on what's going on within the city. And that's all I have since I only have three minutes. Okay. And have a happy Thanksgiving, Merry Christmas. You know, I will say Christmas because I am religious and uh, nothing against anybody else who don't believe, but. Thank, thank, thank you, Mr. Lake. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, did we have anyone else here for public comment? Okay. Okay, next up, public hearing. Public hearing on a first consideration of an ordinance authorizing the issuance of taxable industrial revenue bonds series 2022 MAPS project. So I just need a motion to open the public hearing. So moved. <clears throat> Second. Begin, Second. Begin voting with Commissioner Bowder. Aye. 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 Commissioner Martin? Aye. Commissioner Wilson? Aye. Okay. Uh, staff and public comments. Yeah, Madam Mayor and Commission, I think the community and the Commission is aware of the MAPS Inc. Uh, project in the Garrow Carlson Business Park. I believe most of you, if not all of you, have been to the site and toured it, and it's a beautiful and uh, mm -hmm. facility uh, up and operational. What we're doing tonight is uh, finishing the incentive portion of this. The key document in your packet was the 2021 from uh, June of 2021, the pre-development agreement that authorized the abatement. The abatement was based on the city's return on investment model, which is uh, capital investment um, and jobs created and generated or it spit out a uh, incentive of six years of tax abatement, 60%. Um, which is uh, seems like a reasonable uh, incentive based on the information provided. So what you're doing tonight is going through with the industrial revenue bond process, which is the vehicle by which those property taxes are abated. And then you'll see also uh, a little bit of a wrinkle, not entirely uncommon, is a, what's called a payment in lieu of taxes or a pilot. Mm -hmm. And so what that is is the, the entire amount will be um, abated for six years, the property tax amount, and that payment or that payment in lieu of taxes will come back to the city, and that approximates the 40%, uh, which gets us at the 60% abatement for the user. So if you have any specific questions, uh, city attorney and I can do our best to answer those. And we do have uh, Mr. Yoder yeah. from MAPS Inc. here if you have any questions. Okay. Or, Mr. Yoder, did you have any comments or anything you'd like to say, or no? Do you guys have any? Do you have no. any questions? No, no I looked it. over all of this yeah. and. and <coughs> yeah. yeah, no questions. Yeah, looks I good. Don't have any other questions with oh, regard okay. to it? Looks good to me. Okay. So then, I there's guess no. I just need. Uh, if there's any public comments. Oh, public any public? Comment. Okay. Is there any public comment? No. Okay. Then I guess at this point I need a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. So moved. Okay. Second. Begin voting with Commissioner Bowder. Aye. 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 Commissioner Martin. Aye. Commissioner Wilson. Aye. Okay. Okay. Then uh, first consideration ordinance authorizing issuance of taxable industrial revenue bonds series 2022. Just need a consensus? Yeah. Yes. yes? Yes. Okay. Yep. Okay. There we go. Okay. Next up, uh, mayor's appointments. Mayor Leonhard, I move to appoint to the Convention and Tourism Com Committee Danny Lagore to an unexpired term ending January 31st, 2025. Appoint to the Temporary Leavenworth Transit Advisory Committee Alan Barnes, Kelly Butler, and Linda Johnson to terms ending July 30th, 2024. Just second. Second. 
begin voting with Commissioner Bowder. Aye. 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 Commissioner Martin? Aye. Commissioner Wilson? Aye. Okay. There we go. Okay. Next step is cancellation of outstanding city checks. This will be handled by Roberta Byer, our finance director. Hi, Mayor, Commissioners. According to KSA 10-816A, checks that remain outstanding after a period of two years of issuance may be canceled by the City Commission. The City has a total of 46 checks in the amount of $4,566.76 that remain outstanding after two years of issuance. And you have a listing attached. I would like to note that since we published the list, we've had about five people call and uh, say that they um, would like their, their, their funds. And okay. so we are <laughs> canceling the checks that they apparently lost and reissuing them. Okay. So there are about 38 checks remaining. Okay. It is re recommended that the city commission cancel those remaining checks that have been outstanding for after two years of issuance and that those balances in accordance with KSA 10-816C revert back to the city fund upon which such, such checks were drawn. So is this the final number after? No, that was the this list was that was before published. Before. So and we can't... You're going to cancel the current checks. I'm going to, I am okay. canceling all the and checks. There, there will be new checks issued, issued. for those okay. checks yes. that request. Oh, got it. Okay. 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 Great. Okay, yeah. I didn't have any questions on that. It's That's it. No, it's pretty account. clear. Yeah, clear. Okay, I just so. need a motion. Well, I move that we accept the uh, recommendation of the city staff and uh, cancel those checks that have remained outstanding after a period of two years of issuance. Second. Begin voting with Commissioner Bowder. Aye. 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 Commissioner Martin. Aye. Commissioner Wilson. Aye. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Roberta. Um, okay, next up, Resolution B-2324, authorized serving of complimentary alcoholic liquor at Main Street event, Alive After Five, for 2023. You know, City Clerk Sarah Bodensteiner will handle this item. Madam Mayor and Commissioners, before you this evening is a resolution to authorize the serving of complimentary alcoholic liquor or cereal malt beverage beverages to the members of the general public during the Leavenworth Main Street Alive After Five events that will be held in 2023. Um, Leavenworth Main Street will strictly control this activity um, should the City Commission agree with the request. The governing body just needs to approve the resolution authorizing the events as per required by the Kansas Alcoholic Beverage Control Division. Um, so tonight we're just seeking approval for that resolution. We've been doing this for about six years now. So this is kind of a recurring resolution okay. that we do. Okay. Did anyone have any questions? No. Nope. Pretty cut and dry. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm just curious as uh, about um, what you call it. The event being at which an alcoholic liquor is served must be an official fundraising event of the organization Main Street. I, I assume. Yes. Well, the event must be sponsored by either a charitable organization, no problem, or by a candidate, party, or political committee. Hmm. Does uh, hi, Ms. Scheidt, I notice you're here. Uh, so I'd ask you, does Main Street endorse any particular candidate, political no, party? they do not. Right? No, not at all. We're right. <clears throat> those categories come from state statute. Those are the, oh. those are the categories that are allowed under that, okay. that are exempt from, from the provisions of the Kansas Alcohol, Alcoholic Liquor Ta uh, Act on that. So that's just a recitation of basically of the statute that certify that they are at least a, a qualified entity. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I just need a motion. I move that um, we approve resolution B-2324 um, to authorize serving complimentary alcoholic liquor, uh, the Leavenworth Main Street program, alive after five events for the coming year. Second. Begin voting with Commissioner Bowder. Aye. 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 Commissioner uh, Martin. Aye. Commissioner Wilson. Aye. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, next up. Bids, contracts, and agreements. Consider award of bid 
for bridge scour repairs project. Next three items will be Brian Faust, our public works director. Um, thank you, Madam Mayor and Commissioners. Uh, the item this evening is to consider a warrant for a contract for bridge, bridge scour repairs. Uh, the photograph that you actually have in your package shows a uh, kind of stock photo of what it actually should look like. Um, here's a couple of pictures of the bridges that we're working on um, that show you what they actually look like. Um, the need for bridge scour repairs um, were identified during our biannual bridge inspection, this inspection we do every two years. Mm -hmm. uh, repairs in and around bridges uh, are critical to mainly in, uh, maintain the integrity of the structure. Erosive action over time can remove material from around bridge abutments and can promise the structure. Scour is one of the leading causes of bridge failures in the United States. Uh, bids were opened on November 2nd. Um, we had two bidders, Lina Weaver and Lexico. Uh, Lina Weaver Construction is low bid, and they are an established local contractor that's yep. completed numerous projects for the city. Uh, in the 22 to 26 CIP, uh, we included 30,000 for the 20th Street uh, project and uh, 30,000 uh, total for a, a total of $50,000 for the repairs. Uh, as everybody knows, the cost of fuel, material, labor has increased significantly over the last couple of years. Yeah. Uh, so low bid was 89,700, a uh, difference of 39,700 from what was in the CIP. Yeah. Uh, funding for that difference will be from the streets capital reserve funds. Uh, the City Commission does generally award the contract to the low bidder if the bid is less than the engineer's estimate. Uh, in this case, the engineer's estimate was 72.6, so the low bid was a little bit higher. Um, staff does not feel that rebidding the project will get us better prices. Uh, so staff does recommend the City Commission accept the low bid from Lina Weaver Construction in the amount of 89700 be happy to answer any questions that you have. I have one. I just, I never heard the term scour before um, in regard to this. Is that what is, what I see there is the, the rock that's piled up underneath that you put, right. you put the, the riprap uh, over to keep it from <laughs> washing down. Is that how that works? Yeah, scour, basically it's an erosive action um, from water. And so, and I've lost it. Well, there was, yeah, so you uh, just yeah. need so, more rock? Yeah, this is not the city scouring. This is, <laughs> well, no. this is the city yeah. addressing scouring. So addressing right. scour, okay. Mm -hmm. Right, and so, heard so that what before. happens over time, we put riprap, uh, which yeah. is typically sure. larger rock, and you can see some concrete chunks uh, around the bridge structure mm -hmm. to help prevent it from that erosive, erosive action. Over time, water gets behind it uh, as the water in Three Mile Creek comes up. I'd actually get behind that concrete and rip wrap, start to eat out, out from underneath. Okay. Um, you'll see that start to erode and it exposes parts of that structure. And so this project goes back and kind of replenishes that, puts more rip wrap in there, resets it uh, to protect it. So. Okay. Great. Okay. Any other um, Yeah. You may not be able to answer this, but fortunately we have our finance director here. And you may not have the answer off the top of your head, but. If we use 39700 from the streets capital reserve funds, do we have a pretty good idea of how much we're going to still have in the streets capital reserve funds? Uh, sufficient funds to do the 2023 CIP project. It's a, it's a contract that we have with them to do that. Okay, then, uh, if no other questions uh, or concerns, I just need a motion. Madam Mayor, I move to uh, <clears throat> accept the bid from Lana Weaver for the amount of $89,700 for the bridge scour repairs. Second. Begin voting with Commissioner Bowder. Aye. 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 Commissioner Martin. Aye. <clears throat> Commissioner Wilson. Aye. Okay, next up, consider supplemental agreement number one, airport fuel system replacement project. <clears throat> um, this item this evening, it, again, is just an approval of a supplemental agreement with KDOT. Um, back in June of 2021, the City Commission did approve a contract with Hoydale uh, to upgrade the Sherman Army Airfield fuel dispenser. Uh, at the time, the City had received a bid from Hoydale for roughly 38000 for the work. 
Um, this is a 90-10 grant, um, and so at the time uh, we anticipated 39.5, and so KDOT came back and authorized a matching grant in the amount of 90% of that of 35.550. Um, when we did the work, there were a, a number of electrical upgrades that were needed that weren't included with the original bid from Hoydale. Um, and in that process of submitting the paperwork to KDOT to receive our 35 by 50, mm -hmm. we actually included the total cost of the project, which is all the electrical work, Hoydell's work. We just put the total amount in there. And, and submitted that to KDOT, and we only requested the 35 by 50. And they came back and said, well, your project costs more. Would you like more money? Yes. And we said, <laughs> yes. Uh, of course. And so they sent us supplemental agreement number one, uh, mm -hmm. which uh, will give us an additional amount from 35,550 up to 48,5 or 476,10. So uh, we're just asking um, if, uh, for supplemental agreement one with KDOT for project AB 2022 uh, 16 be approved and authorized the mayor to sign. I'd be happy to answer any questions. No, I'm I'm good. Yeah, I think it's great. Yeah. yeah, and we need to we need to keep our airport up, don't we, Dean? <laughs> we do. <laughs> okay. Um, if no other questions, then I need a motion. I right. move. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. I move that um, we that we approve supplemental agreement number one with KDOT for project AV 2022-16 to be approved and authorize the mayor to sign. Need a second. Second. Begin voting with Commissioner Bowder. Aye. 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 Commissioner Martin. Aye. Commissioner Wilson. Aye. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Faust. And then I need to, I need to, or we need to oh. do the second one for the sole source contract for the that fuel just, system. That was just. Um, um, Documentation for the policy report. You don't need anything yeah. else. Okay, don't need yeah. to do that. No, thank you. Okay, uh, next up, first consideration ordinance for grease trap and grease interceptor regulations. This will be Earl Wilkinson, Deputy Director of Public Works. Good evening, Madam Good evening. Mayor and members of the Commission. Um, so currently, we have a program for grease traps and interceptors that began after the EPA did inspections with the city um, approximately in 2012. The plumbing code for several years now requires the installation and maintenance of grease interceptors or grease traps for all food service establishments. After the installation, of a grease trap or grease interceptor, there is a constant need to inspect, maintain, clean, and service them. Besides the physical inspection by city staff, the city also implemented a record keeping program that is handled by the owners, and the city sends out a letter annually reminding the establishments of the need for monthly device inspections and request a copy of their inspection logs that they take. The Kansas Department of Health and Environment continues to monitor our efforts with this program. That is a key reason why we need to formalize this through an ordinance. Another reason is to provide maximum protection to our sanitary and stormwater systems. An unmaintained or faulty grease interceptor or grease trap can cause sanitary sewer backups and laterals and mains or other blockages, and this can lead to illicit discharges, which can enter the stormwater system or a waterway. And furthermore, these issues can impact neighboring <coughs> properties, owners, and create additional unnecessary cleanup costs for taxpayers. I'd like to give you a couple I apologize. That's okay. Uh, 
Did we lose you? No, no I right. haven't been able to get it open. Uh, Thank God. Tri- yeah. Shouldn't just be able to double tap. Yeah. Look at the top. Double tap. Yeah. <clears throat> Turn away. Nope. Okay. I guess I will. Guess I will not show you the fog pictures. I apologize. <laughs> so, in in addition to the ordinance, we have included in the packet best management practices, which are set by the director of public works. It helps further, um, basically, provide assistance to the folks that will be using these grease traps and grease interceptors. A maintenance log and educational material. Education is always a key part of this program as we strive to partner with the businesses that fall under the proposed regulations. Staff is proposing the following regulations as part of the ordinance. Require an annual grease discharge permit and a $25 fee for each facility. Stipulate requirements for the maintenance and annual inspection of the facility and devices. Recommendations on how often the devices should be cleaned, monthly inspections, and using a registered service provider for cleaning. Stipulate the enforcement actions and fines for facilities that fail to obtain a permit, maintain their facilities, provide credible evidence of routine maintenance, or fail to clean up an illicit discharge as required. The city will also establish and manage a no-cost registration for all persons, firms, and businesses that desire to be authorized to pump, clean, and or inspect grease removal devices within the sanitary sewer service area. Those registrations shall be good for a period of three years for the persons, firms, or businesses before they must re-register. And with that, I will entertain any questions. Yeah, I have questions. Okay. Okay. Questions. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so this is all. This is all new. What have we been doing in the past with regard to? So it's not new. Um, when the EPA came to the city um, seven to ten years ago and said that you need to do better, you need stuff like grease interceptor and grease trap programs. We started an education. Um, we went out to businesses. We told them what what we have. We started. Uh, in effect running this program now probably three or four years ago we said we need to put this in ordinance right Um, it's a it's a a process that needs to be codified and so we had some turnover in the department director level we didn't have a deputy director and so this was on the list of things to do when we got enough time was to put the formal program in something the EPA is waiting on us to do they're big on formalizing your processes. So this will not be anything, uh, a shock or a surprise. Uh, it's common in best practices to have these uh, discharge uh, permits for businesses that generate uh, food waste. So they've never had this before? Uh, they've never had a permit before? They've never had the, a specific permit, but we've been operating the program for about seven years. Okay, so what does that mean? That mean you go out and inspect every year? Uh, so yeah, there, there's multiple, and, and they have to be able. They have to then provide us uh, at our request or at a certain time period their inspection reports. The other reason we need to do this is um, we have a, just a few businesses that we will go to and ask for inspection reports, and they'll leave and come back, and every month will be filled out with the exact same pen at the exact same time, and there's nothing really that we can do about that. Um, there are 95% of our businesses are diligent about checking their traps, right. having them maintained so that this grease and fat does not clog up the city's system. We've done um, a lot of costly repairs on the taxpayers' dollars for noncompliance, and without it codified, we really have no recourse for the very f- uh, few number of businesses who don't comply with a proper grease trap program. Okay. And, but overall, like you said, 95% are... Yeah, nearly every business um, that has been in operation uh, with City of Leavenworth has worked with us, has has this in place, and it's not an issue. But we didn't have the program codified. And so there's nothing that we can do to formally enforce a lot of this um, because it was just something that had not made its way into the Code of Ordinances. So the fines would never come about unless there was a problem. We certainly wouldn't even expect... um, 
them to come about. Uh, it'd be education, 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 and it would be through continual non-compliance. Um, and again, these then enter the, in the entire system. They affect neighboring property owners, downstream properties. Uh, city crews have to do the repairs. So that would be a last resort. Um, and we haven't got that to that level in uh, seven years. We've had compliance uh, upon city inspections, but uh, you need something in there in case uh, well, it becomes a part of the issue. I have no problem with a fine if they failure to renew or, or the records aren't completed, but I don't understand any need to have an, a $25 permit fee for each. Uh, it would be uh, alarm permits have a fee, dog license has a fee, um, the hood, uh, all the, the different elements within the city. If you don't have any kind of skin in the game, uh, permits and fees are usually not nearly as effective. That's only twenty-five dollars, so that's not much skin. That's about the permit fee. We try to keep it low. Mm -hmm. um, there's no need to um, to go anything higher, but um, okay. that would be in line with similar permits that the city has in our schedule of fees. Certainly, don't want it to be uh, onerous on on any business owner. Did you have anything? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Um, isn't making a person or entity guilty of a misdemeanor? A five hundred dollar fine on the first condition, a thousand dollar fine on the on a second or subsequent condition. Isn't that a little onerous? We have to make people guilty of a misdemeanor. Well, so we can't. That'd be up to the municipal court judge. And right. the five hundred dollars is common for any misdemeanor as a cap. That that's usually never the case. Um, and we would certainly never expect it to get to in that case. Um, this would be pretty I'm standard language. Had anything at that level? It would just be, it would follow the same schedule of fees as any sort of misdemeanor that, that the city would have. I got you. It is a serious issue. Um, you know, we make joke, we, we posted a picture on Facebook today, and we got, you know, 100 people commenting, please don't pour your, your grease down the sink to, uh, over the holiday, and people said, you know, but it, it's, a, it's a big issue. Mm -hmm. um, and failure over and over knowingly to, to non comply can create um, tens of thousands of dollars in repairs. Or even uh, more. The, uh, for city crews and we we've gone down that road um, and most everybody takes it seriously it's a business practice if you're running a successful business or a, a business this is something you do and some just try to get away uh, without doing uh, what's required mm -hmm. okay. any other questions no then um, I guess I just need a consensus yes yes yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. First consideration ordinance for amending section 44-32 school zones. Yeah, our police chief Pat Kitchens. At American Commission, um, one of our uh, the police department is before the governing body to request the commission place an ordinance on first consideration that changes section 44-32 of the municipal code of ordinances under school zones by adding a school zone to the area of Nettie Hartnett School at 1003rd Avenue. Um, at a recent community engagement event, we had a question about why there was not a school zone located in that area. Uh, we weighed into it and did some research. Uh, as it turns out, over the course of the last few years, that building has changed uses a few times, where there were occasions where there, it was a school facility, but there were no students there. Um, in 2019, the city of Leavenworth did a pretty thorough codification of our ordinances and got rid of um, language in there uh, that wasn't pertinent, uh, and at that time, there were no students at the facility. Um, I've had some communication with the school district. There are a small number of students that are back at the school now and will be there for the foreseeable future, so we feel like it's prudent to reestablish the school zone there. It would be uh, on 3rd Avenue between Marshall and Congress. We would reduce the speed limit from 30 to 20, which is customary for a school zone. Um, and so I'd be asking you to place that ordinance on first consideration. I'll be glad to answer whatever questions you might have. Mm, I didn't have any questions. No. Yes? no. Sounds good to me. Okay. Nope. Sounds great. Okay. Uh, consensus then? Yes. 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 Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Next up, first consideration ordinance rezoning 2700 State Street. Next three items will be handled by our city planner, Bethany Falvey. Welcome, <laughs> Bethany. Good evening, Madam Mayor and Commissioners. 
2700 State Street is the guidance center. Um, this is a request to rezone the property from RMF, multifamily residential district, to RMX, residential mixed use district. The property is a vacant four acre lot just north of the guidance center. The guidance center is intending to purchase the property for future expansion of the guidance center's behavioral health services as well as to provide space for expansion of partnerships with other potential providers in the community. There are ongoing discussions with Leavenworth Attainable Housing Group for the potential construction of a multifamily housing unit to provide transitional housing for their training and support programs to assist the underserved persons in the community. All intended future uses for the property, medical office, and multifamily housing are allowed uses in the RMX zoning district. The guidance center is zoned office business district and to the north of this property is another multifamily development. This proposed RMX zoning is a good blend of the two adjacent zoning districts. At this time there are no specific <coughs> plans for the development of the property. Any proposed development would require full site plan review and approval by staff and will be required to comply with all applicable development regulations and building codes. <coughs> um, the Planning Commission did consider this item at their November 7th meeting and voted 4-0 to zero to recommend approval of rezoning of the dis, um, request. After the required public notices were sent to the property owners within 200 feet as required by Kansas State statute, staff received one call from a notified property owner um, and that was it. Um, we do recommend approval based on the conditions of determination contained within the policy report. And we do have Keith Rickard here from the Guidance Center if you have any questions. Okay. Did you have any questions? No, I don't. I think it's, I think I'm fine with this. Pretty straightforward. Yeah, it is. It is. Okay. I just need a consensus then. Yes. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. First consideration ordinance rezoning 212, 220, and 224 Maple Street. Ms. Falvey will continue with this one. Um, the applicant is requesting a rezoning of their property located at 212, 220, and 224 Maple Street from R16 high density single family residential district to I1 light industrial district. Oh, yeah. The subject property is owned by Geiger Ready Mix and is currently being developed as additional parking area for employees and equipment. Mm -hmm. The property consists of three vacant lots that lie adjacent to the property and is currently being utilized by Geiger for parking of equipment. The property is to the east of Stubby Park and has been vacant for at least 25 years. The two lots addressed as 220 and 224 were previously owned by the City of Leavenworth and were transferred to Geiger in 2021 for the express purpose of providing land for additional parking for the business. Plans for the expanded parking lot were reviewed and approved by City staff and it was discovered after construction had begun on the parking lot that the property was zoned R16. The rezoning request would bring the site into compliance with existing regulations for the use of the property. All other property owned by uh, Geiger in the immediate vicinity is zoned um, I-1. The Planning Commission considered this item at their November 7th meeting, and they voted 4-0 to zero to recommend approval of the rezoning request. Um, we did not receive any calls or communications once we notified um, adjacent owners, and we do recommend approval based on the conditions of determination contained within the policy report. And as a reminder, there's an agreement that the public can use the uh, parking lot on the west side. And right. so That's that right was on. part of the city granting that lot. So uh, Geiger will be able to park their uh, equipment there, um, the east parking lot, and then the other one is for employees and then also for public use. Um, Great. If, we have, if we get to have some sledding this year. So. Yay. Okay. Um, <laughs> Got to have that sledding. Well, yeah, I know. Let's have the sledding. Uh, <laughs> any uh, oh, questions? I don't have a sled. <laughs> well, we'll have to get you one. No. <laughs> no. Uh, okay, any yes. questions? No. Okay, no. Okay, consensus. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. 
Uh, first consideration ordinance rezoning 28 Limit Street and 2 Vila Street. The subject property is owned by Greenemeyer Rentals. The applicant is requesting a rezoning of a portion of their property located at 28 Limit Street and all of 2 Vila Street from R19 Medium Density Single Family Residential District to PUD Planned Unit Development. The rezoning is being requested in order to consolidate commonly owned property and to plan for future development of residential parcels that are consistent with the existing Riverview Estates development. Currently, the properties addressed at 2 Limit and 16 Limit are zoned PUD, as well as a portion of the property addressed at 28 Limit. The proposed rezoning will provide a more consistent zoning and residential development pattern. The accompanying final plat um, vacates a portion of the unused Viola Street right-of-way and allows for a more cohesive lot layout. And as with all PUD zoning proposals, the only allowed use will be that um, as shown on the development application, any proposed change in use or lot configuration would require further public hearing and review and approval by Planned Commission and City Commission. Um, the Planning Commission considered this item at their November 7th meeting and voted 4 to 0 to recommend approval of the zoning request. The associated preliminary and final plat were also considered and approved at that time. Um, we did have two. Um, members of the public at that meeting, um, just confirming that it was not going to be multifamily. Again, this is a PUD, so only the allowed use um, in the development application is allowed. Any um, deviation from that would have to come back. Um, we do recommend approval based on the conditions of determination contained within the policy report. Sounds good to me. Okay. I'm fine with that. We yep. Me too. Had discussions on this area before. Yeah, we did. Okay, so I have a consensus. Yes. Like. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, now it looks like uh, we have the consent agenda. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I do move to approve the uh, claims for October 22nd, 2022 through November 18th, 2022, in the amount of Four million one hundred twenty thousand eight hundred fifty nine dollars forty eight cents. Net amount of payroll number twenty two, effective November fourth, twenty twenty two, in the amount of three hundred fifty eight thousand forty eight dollars seventy four cents. No police and fire pension and payroll number twenty twenty three, effective November eighteenth, twenty twenty two, in the amount of three hundred sixty four thousand two hundred sixty three dollars seventeen cents. Includes police and fire pension in the amount of nine thousand eight hundred eighty eight dollars seventy one cents. Second. Begin voting, Commissioner Bowder. Aye. 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 Commissioner Martin. Aye. Commissioner Wilson. Aye. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Now it looks like we will. Um, I guess I just need a how motion. Many, how many minutes do we need for yes. the executive session? Fifteen. 10 to 15, 15 minutes probably would be safe. Maybe yeah, we'll be back be in fine. here at, uh, by 7, 10 on that clock. That kind of gives you a chance to get in there. And okay, so mm -hmm. um, I, Mayor Leon Hard, move to recess into executive session to discuss the annual performance review of the city manager persuadent to the non-elected personal, personnel matters exception KSA 75-4319B1. The open meeting to resume in the city commission chambers at... 7.50. 715. 710. Yeah. So you want 710? Okay. By the clock in yeah, the city commission right. chambers. Human Resources Director uh, Lana Lanter is requested to attend. Second. Again, voting Commissioner Bowder. Aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Commissioner Martin. Aye. Commissioner Wilson. Aye. Uh, okay. Okay.
Have a motion to close the executive session. So moved. Second. Begin voting, Commissioner Bowder. Aye. 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 Jermaine. Good. Okay. Aye. Okay, sorry, thanks. I, I need to set him down. <laughs> okay, um, now uh, I just need, I guess, a motion, or, or I can move to approve. What? We're in, um, we're in public here. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, I move to approve a 1% merit increase for City Manager Paul Kramer, effective with the first check of the 2023 payroll. Second. Begin voting with Commissioner Bowder. Aye. 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 Jermaine? I heard it. Okay. Yeah. Commissioner Martin? Mm, aye. Okay. Okay, then that ends... Uh, ends our meeting so now we can just go around uh did you have anything, anything? Nope. I didn't. okay um let's start with uh commissioner martin did you have anything further uh, yes ma'am um i would just like to you know, say publicly i really do appreciate um you know everybody on, on uh, the, the city staff uh but you know, specifically want to point out um mr kramer and i think he's done a phenomenal job this year, and I uh, really appreciate his leadership, uh, to his team members, and uh, the sharpness uh, and business acumen he brings to his position. And um, so, anyway, I just want to say good job. Uh, thank you for that, Paul. And, and I do wish everybody uh, warmest uh, Thanksgiving wishes. So, thank you. Thank you. Okay, Commissioner Wilson. How do I hold him up? Do I hold him up here? Yeah. First off, I want to apologize for being absent today. Unfortunately, I'm under the weather. Uh, but just want to say, man, happy Thanksgiving to everyone. Uh, God bless you. And uh, Paul, I wish we can uh, keep you here for another 10 to 20 more years. Thank you for your leadership. Uh, you, the morale at City Hall is amazing, and it's because of your great leadership. And thank you to all the city staff that support him and everything that he does. Hope you have a great one. God bless. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Hingela. A few things. One, thank you. Uh, you know, my first year, and you have guided me quite a bit, and I appreciate that. Um, but in addition to the great job you've done, I, I, I just have to uh, thank everybody on this that was involved in the light parade that we just recently had. I mean, that thing and the tree lighting, that was just a great, great, great event uh, altogether. Um, I wanted to thank everybody in, in the... Uh, on the city staff for their participation. Also, the, the chorus that was there. Uh, the Richard, school. Richard, Richard Warren, Warren. Middle that, School. That, that was really nice of them to uh, to show up and do that for us, especially on such a cold With, night. Uh, Ms. Uh, uh, Whitener. Whitener was yeah. their director. Oh, yeah, they did a yep. phenomenal job. They did. And, uh, you know, they, as well as everybody else, that all, all the folks that came out, especially the vendors, turning out to brave the cold, and it was cold. It was cold. So <laughs> thanks so much to them. I hope everybody has a wonderful Thanksgiving. Be safe over the holiday season. And don't forget some of the great things that are coming up. Breakfast with Santa on the 3rd of <laughs> December. Holiday Art Gala at the Heritage Center on the 2nd of December, night before that, and all kinds of other things that are going on. You have something? Yeah, good. Yeah, I'll say that. Have a happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> Thank you. All right, I won't take anybody's thunder, but thank you, Paul. <laughs> Very good year. Um, yeah. For pulling us through COVID and beyond, and for everything that you, you do um, for us and for our community, we appreciate it. Um, uh, just wanted to wish everybody a heartfelt, uh, blessed Thanksgiving, and uh, um, look forward to seeing you afterwards. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah, thank you, Paul, for everything, always. You know, I'm calling you all the time. <laughs> we know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but uh, you're the man with the answers, and, yeah, always have guided me. And, uh, and with the city staff, you know, I am really blessed to be able to serve you. Uh, that's one thing I'm thankful for. Uh, but the city staff, uh, the teamwork that they show, uh, the family that they are, and um, it takes a good leader to put that together. So thank you, Mr. Kramer. Uh, 
And also, um, I want everyone to have a great Thanksgiving. I do want to say really quick, uh, there's a free Thanksgiving Day dinner, the 7th Street Feast. It's 1130 to 1, uh, St. Paul Lutheran School, Jim, it's carry out. Or if you want meal delivery, you can call 913-290-0527. And uh, that's up until Thanksgiving Day, up until 10 a.m. They will... Uh, deliver a meal to you. So please take advantage of that. And that's for anybody, any age. So uh, with that being said, yeah, have a happy Thanksgiving. Uh, safe, enjoy family and friends. Thank you. Just need a motion. So move. Second. That we adjourn. Second. Second. Okay.